Hey guys, what's up? Life Ball Joe here. Today we're going to discuss Captain America Civil War. It came out May 6, 2015, directed by Anthony and Joe Russo. Second Marvel film directed by the Russo brothers. Um, this movie is two hours and 27 minutes long. This is essentially Avengers 3, even though it's not, because the uh, Thor, any Asgardians, uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy are not in this, Hulk is not in this. So all Earth-bound, basically, uh, Avengers are in this film. This film is super important because this was another landscape changing of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, as well as uh, cinematography, uh, film in general. Why I say that is because it brought so many characters from the same universe together. Um, again, but it also introduced very important characters at the same time. King T'Challa of Wakanda, Black Panther is introduced in this film, as well as Peter Parker from Queens, Spider-Man, Tom Holland, that he is, is introduced in this film as well. So this is a very important film with, again, refacing, uh, resurfacing the landscape for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Film starts out with a handful of Avengers uh, fighting against crossbones. There is an explosion that um, Wanda Maximoff, aka Scarlet Witch, happens to unintentionally misdirect, kills 12 Wakandans. There are um, the Sokovian Accords brought into effect by 117 UN nations. And there is a conference to have the Accords signed by the Avengers. And that's where the Civil War plot comes into effect. Some members of the Avengers team are against it. Some are for it. Tony Stark is for it. Steve Rogers is against it. So it's a matter of whose team is, you know, for and against. Should they be held accountable? Should there be restrictions on their actions? Is it them that deems a situation worthy of taking action? But aside from all this happening, aside from, um, you know, the explosion, you have Bucky Barnes, <clears throat> the Winter Soldier, being a big plot point of this as well. So James Buchanan, Bucky Barnes. There's also uh, Colonel Zemo, who is from Sokovia, who is out for revenge as well. Revenge from the Sokovia incident happening. So it's pinned that Bucky is the one who made the explosion for Wakanda. That's why uh, T'Challa is out for Bucky, but Steve and Falcon are trying to, you know, get Bucky as well, but in a protection aspect. Um, because they haven't had any leads really, and then all of a sudden this bomb goes off and then Bucky just shows up. But it turns out it was Zemo the entire time. And Zemo is the one who is triggering uh, Bucky's soldier mindset within these certain Russian words. Zemo is tr desperately trying to get information on a mission report, December 16th, 1991. As the film goes on, we find out that December 16th, 1991 is when Tony Stark's parents died. It's when Tony Stark's parents were actually killed. And who killed them? Bucky. The Winter Soldier killed them in order to get the serum, Super Soldier serum that was in their trunk, so that way more Winter Soldiers could be uh, created within Siberia. That's how that intertwines coming into effect. So yes, there are there's a civil war happening between the Avengers because of the Accords, but there's a true civil war between um, Steve and Tony because of what Bucky what had revealed, um, what Zemo revealed Bucky doing. That's at the very, very end of the film. So you have all of these characters interacting with each other. There's a lot of Vision, Wanda connections going on. You have <clears throat> Clint, Hawkeye, and Scott, Ant-Man coming into effect on Team Cap's side. Um, again, Tom Holland as Peter Parker is just absolutely hysterical coming into effect. Another aspect is uh, Sharon Carter, Agent 13, Peggy Carter's niece. Um, is revealed to be Peggy Carter's niece. Peggy actually dies in this film, so it's a big emotional arc for Steve, trying to, you know, piece together that him and Buck are the only ones left really from their time, from their generation, from their war. So a lot of different things happen throughout the entire world as this film goes. We go through many different European countries. We go back to New York for at the Avengers headquarters. That's really it on the American side, but this film is very international. It's Africa and it's Europe, basically. That's the two, you know, main focal points of this of this film.
the very, 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 very end, post credit wise, um, Bucky says to Steve that he feels like he should be back on ice, so that way um, he can protect those around until they figure out how to get, you know, get his head back on track. And we find out that Bucky's being put back on ice in Wakanda thanks to King T'Challa. Because T'Challa wanted to kill Bucky, thinking that Bucky was the one who actually killed his father. But in actuality, it was Zemo who was the one who wanted the Avengers to pin themselves against and tear apart the Empire, basically. So Zemo is now in jail. Um, the agent who is a big part of Black Panther, which we'll talk about, he's introduced into this Captain America film. Um, what else? Small little things of Hydra come up. Um, more cleanup jobs of Sokovia, more, you know, keeping the Avengers in check. And it's really a big Steve vs. Tony movie because of the egos that they both have, but because of the, the logical mindsets both have. You see who's correct in their telling of things. Yes, things should be kept in check, but yes, you shouldn't give up your freedom in order to keep things in check. So it's hard. It's hard to say what team are you on. I was always Team Cap. Always Team Cap. How can you go against Captain Steve Rogers, right? But Tony's got a point in some things. And it's really heartbreaking to see Tony break down seeing what Bucky did to his parents. Tony Stark is a very important character because of the amount of growth that the character has from his first introduction in 2008 Iron Man. He has had the biggest story arc within the Marvel characters. I mean, yes, everyone has evolved in their own special way and an important way, but Tony is trying to be accountable for what has happened. He wants everyone to be in check and he feels responsible because Ultron's his fault. Sokovia is kind of his fault. Sokovia is his fault because of Ultron. A lot of other aspects, you know, he did sacrifice possibly sacrifice himself, you know, going into that wormhole in New York during the first Avengers in 2012, but a lot of different things that happened to, to, that have happened to Tony have, have definitely taken a toll on him, and he wants to give up the life, but he can't. And he talks about that with Steve when he's trying to get Steve to sign the Accords for like the third time, because he's saying that him and Pepper are kind of on a break, because he's always attracted to danger and he can't help it, and it, it, he doesn't want to stop, kind of a thing. And he needs, he needs to figure that out. So... This film is very important. It changes the landscape of the Marvel Cinematic Universe again. We have our Spider-Man, we have our Black Panther introduced into these films. What happens to Scott and Clint, we find out later on. What happens to Wanda, we find out later on. It's, it's a very poignant thing, especially when Rhodey gets shot by Vision on accident and becomes paraplegic waist down. Tony has to create this exoskeleton basically for him to walk again. So much change happens in this film and bringing Bucky into the Avengers side of things because he's Steve's friend. And to see that bromance again, that connection that they always have had and that they will always have is super important of a hundred year time period jump, basically. It's, it, this, this film was amazing. It, 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 I don't know how many times I can say it changed the landscape, <laughs> but it changed the landscape. What did you guys think of Civil War when it came out? What do you guys think of it now? It is one of the most important Marvel films that you could possibly watch. There's no getting around that. Let's discuss it. Let's discuss it some more. Mucho mahalo, guys.